Singleton Module Adapter and Decorator are the design patterns that we're gonna learn about in this video and also try to rank them within this table, just the way we did with all these guys in two previous videos, so if you missed them, definitely go check them out, you will find them in the description below. And we're gonna start with the very first one, Singleton. So let's go over the code, first of all, to better understand this, because Singleton is it's it's everywhere, all right? It's one of the most commonly used design patterns, I would say. So imagine you have a JavaScript file where you're trying to establish a database database connection. Let's say on your backend, you have different controllers that get triggered every time a different route gets called. And you have one single database, a MySQL database, and you need to establish a connection from your node application to this database, all right? Usually you have some kind of a database service. Let's say this dbconnection.js is the service that we're looking for, all right? What, what are we doing here? First of all, we have this connection and this, this is just a mocked query that's gonna return some object and we can execute it. And here you, you're gonna see that we have this method, which is static, which means you don't have to initialize the object to call it. You can call it directly. If you don't know about, just go and read it on MDM. I will probably link some something in the description as well. But we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this class, all right? We're gonna instantiate this class that we're already in if there is no instance of it yet. So meaning if there is no instance, if this is falsy, then we're gonna create establish or create this class. And then we're gonna say connection established. And then we're gonna return this instance. And of course, we are exporting the DB connection. All right, this is the singleton itself. Now in JavaScript, the way you would work with singletons is this way. So first of all, we're gonna import this DB connection class. Of course, we're exporting it as a default. So the whatever you import is gonna be your default, all right? And then we're gonna call this get instance. You remember the static method get instance that simply can be called because we're not doing anything like this anymore. New DB connection, we're simply calling it. Why? Because it's already initialized here, okay? We're simply gonna call this and then do some kind of an example query so db instance dot connection, connection is coming from here. And we're gonna say dot query because this connection object has a method called query, all right? So we're gonna save this and in the terminal, I'm gonna run this file. So a singleton dot JS and you're gonna see that we get the result. Now, how how is it different from any other instantiation, all right? How can you see that this is actually a singleton? Because so far it simply looks like we're returning just a class, right? So as you can see here, we logged out that the connection is established. So the thing about singletons is that singletons, singletons get created or rather instantiated only once within your runtime, all right? So you can instantiate one singleton and then use the singleton from different places meaning every time you access the singleton, you don't have to create this singleton class every time. And how do we achieve this? First of all, let's prove the theory. I'm gonna create another database instance right here. I'm gonna call it database instance two, and let's see how many instantiations we get, all right? Actually, this is not instance, we're simply returning an instance, but I know, I think you know what I mean. So let's call it. Actually, I did not save this. Did I save this? Anyway, we call it again. And even though we run get instance twice now, we still have one connection established. So we have a connection to the database and we can do, and we can get this instance from different files, from different controllers, anywhere from our Node.js server, and then reuse this instance, meaning the connection to the database. How cool is that? So the trick here is that, what, what what makes it a singleton, all right? I'm giving you the clue. So as you can see here on line 19, we are already returning an instantiated class of the DB connection. If we would have done like this, simply returned the DB connection, all right? 
if we would have done like this, then we would have had to instantiate it here, like this, every time we instantiate, and then we would call get instance. Okay, but since it's a static method, and we're already instantiating it here in advance, meaning we literally have only one instantiation, and then we are already returning this instantiated class or instance of this class as a default. Okay, this is what makes it a singleton and in other words, reusable. All right, so I really like singletons. They're literally everywhere. They can be used as fun files or functions that can be used across the whole application, like environment variables, for example, some utility functions, and of course, the Redux, React Redux, Angular Store, Vue Redux, and so on. The, the store concept in all these frameworks is actually a singleton because the store gets instantiated once and then is reused across the whole application because this store object is a singleton. As you can see, it's quite useful. So I would actually put it to a Megusta. I like it, you know? So we're gonna go to the next pattern called module and let's see what it's about. So I already have the files. I'm gonna close these two. I'm gonna clear the console real quickly and we're gonna go to the module. So the module is actually very straightforward. You gotta watch my previous video on, on the same topic where we covered the ifies immediately invoked function expressions because this is indeed an ify. So we have a function, but we are wrapping this function in another function and calling it right away because modules are supposed to encapsulate pieces of code. Imagine we have one JavaScript file, but we would like to have a different namespace or modularize our chunks of code. So let's say we can have my module, then we can have your module. Oh, let's rename it your module and all of that without actually putting this code into different files. If you put them into different files, it's easy. There's no collision in namespaces, all right? But if you are working within one file, then you have to, or, or don't, don't you don't have to, but you can use this design pattern. All right, you're not gonna stumble upon this one very often unless I assume you're dealing with legacy code, but just keep in mind that this is one possibility, all right? So if I run this code, node module.js, we're gonna see that we are console logging out. And what are we doing here? Well, we have a my module, which is inside an ify or is an ify, and we are returning one public variable, and we can also return a public function. Just the fields that you can access after um, basically this function is called automatically. So these are accessible as public methods and functions. All right. Just one thing about the singleton that now that I remembered before we go to rating this, um, you gotta make sure um, that you don't run into memory leaks when you use singletons. And singletons are especially hard when you have a parallel execution. So when you're using multi-threading or parallelism, just make sure that you don't run into troubles. And now back to the module, and let's try to rate this one. I'm gonna put the module to Bro, that's just too basic, all right? Nowadays we have ES6 modules and I don't think you will stumble upon the module design pattern that often, all right? Unless I'm wrong, just prove me wrong down in the comments below and let me know if you've ever used the module pattern. Next one is gonna be the adapter. Let's open the adapter file and see what it's all about. So the adapter file is kind of a wrapper around a different class. I already have a video on the anti-corruption layer, which is the idea of adding an extra layer on top of the old layer. And the old layer can be a legacy service, for example, that shouldn't be used anymore. So you add a new layer with a newer API that the client can use, but it's kind of a fake cover of the old functionality. So let's, let's take a look at what I mean. Let's say we have a class called legacy shipping and it can have a method called calculate cost. So we are told that, you know, we are no longer 
able to use the legacy shipping class because it's legacy, all right? We need to move on and adapt to the new API standards. So we create a new class called shipping service. And as I said, this class interface is expected by the client, but not yet ready. So we're, it's still in the progress, all right? So request shipping cost, it's still not implemented. What we can do is we can create, a, create an adapter. So we'll say shipping adapter except extends the shipping service, which is the new service. And then it's under the hood, it's going to use the legacy shipping. All right, legacy shipping is being instantiated and assigned here. And then we're going to have the method with a similar name as our shipping service, which is still in progress, it's not yet implemented. All right, and it's going to under the hood call the old calculate cost method. This way, kind of hiding the legacy functionality under the hood and presenting the new API while it's still being developed. Maybe it's ready or not, but just in this example, I wanted to even make it cooler that, hey, this is not even implemented, but we can already use an adapter. I guess you get the idea or go watch the other video that I made about the anti-corruption layer. I think it's going to give you even more insights on this design pattern. And if I run this, so I'm going to run this adapter. We're going to see that everything works perfectly, even though we're kind of <laughs> ditching the old legacy shipping and even working around this sh new shipping service that is still in progress. All right. So let's go to the adapter. OK, let's also quickly discuss the pros and cons. The pros is obviously you can obfuscate, not obfuscate, but hide the legacy code. Um, but the, the cons is that you actually don't get rid of the legacy code. This is kind of a wrapper. So you still have some extra layer that you need to maintain and the old code is still there and you need to maintain that too in the meantime. But adapter is pretty cool. I guess I will say I will use it because it may come in handy at some point. And last but not least, the decorator pattern. This one is also quite cool and it's very similar to the inheritance. But as we know, composition over inheritance or versus inheritance, let's take a look. So the decorator, this one comes in handy when we use with or work with classes. All right. Let's say we have a class called user and we have a name and it can say something user and its name. So what we can do is we can create a new class with a decorated user, a cool user, which can also have a street and a city and the, yeah, the user, or actually not the user, just the name, street and city. But instead of doing inheritance, meaning doing implements or extends rather, extends blah, 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 the user class, we can instead modify this class on the fly during the runtime. So that's why this design pattern is so cool. It's it's very dynamic and you can basically use composition over inheritance and get rid of the inheritance. And it ultimately results in simpler code because you don't have this chain of classes depending on each other. You know what I mean? If you're into inheritance. So what, what we have here is we have the decorator decorated user class, which has a constructor which also accepts the user and a street and a city. So every time we create the user class, the old old one here, we're simply going to pass a name, all right, and we can say the name. But with the decorated class, we're going to pass the user itself, which is the older class that we already instantiated. And we're going to pass the street and the city. And as soon as we pass this class here, here, it comes here, it gets assigned to the user. And then the user already has its name, name comes from here. And we're going to say that decorated user is this name attached here and two new values that we gave it. All right, so let's run it. Node decorator. And we're going to see that decorated user Kelly that we passed earlier and Broadway, New York. I'm going to say this one is actually pretty cool. So it definitely gives a good dopamine hit. And yeah, 
This one is pretty cool indeed. Uh, there are some cases where you don't want to use inheritance or the code just looks ugly. You want to be more dynamic. And I think the decorator pattern is the best one to go with. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash like down below if you didn't have not already and obviously subscribe. What are you doing? If you will, why haven't you even subscribed? Like 90% of my users are not even subscribed. What the hell? Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video and check out the other two videos that I told you about. And yeah, good luck.